want to go to Steve Forbes right now, Forbes Media Chairman, Editor-in-Chief. Very good read of all things economic and market, financial, money, money, money. Um, a lot of people losing a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> is, this, is this the Fed's fault? Uh, it partially is the Fed's fault because they're showing they don't know how to fight inflation. They think you fight inflation by slowing the economy down. When they use the word soft landing, that's Fed speak. We hope to slow the economy but not push it into a recession. They don't realize the best way to fight inflation, which they did in the late 80s and 1990s, keep a relatively stable value of the dollar, let the economy sort the thing out. But when you're manipulating interest rates, that's price controls, and the market realizes what's happening. Yes, yeah, so 50 point, basis points at a time, it says 75. Well, look at the 10-year. People are realizing all of that is moving up. Amazingly, everyone looks at the 10-year. Look at the two-year. A few basis points a few weeks ago, now two and a half going on 3%. Yeah. As Trump would say, it's huge. Yeah, and, and it, it gets more bigly, doesn't it, right? So, so if you look at for, you know, two, five, uh, seven, 20, 30, uh, up, up, up we go. So there's really very few places to hide here. And the normal argument has been you raise rates, you will slow things down. Um, but it, uh, it's too early to tell whether that will be the case here. Uh, but you think the Fed has it backwards. What should it be doing? What it should be doing, instead of trying to manipulate the activity of the economy and this idea that if we have a lot of uh, people doing things, that's bad for inflation because prices go up. Right. It's nonsense. History shows it's nonsense. Just focus, they should say, we're focusing on a stable value of the dollar. We're looking at commodity prices. We're looking at the gold price, like Greenspan did for a few years in the late 80s and 1990s, what they call the great moderation. Unfortunately, right. he abandoned it. But uh, so that's what you're going to focus on, stability. Let the economy sort it out. A big chunk of this inflation, as we know, is what we call in this book we wrote, inflation, is non-monetary inflation. When you disrupt supply chains, when China shuts things down, you have a war in Ukraine, Fed can't control that, but it can control the value of the dollar. So leave it alone, and they, should, they won't do it, but they should stop manipulating interest rates. Let the market set it. Well, the market has already uh, been proving that the dollar is the currency, the fallback of choice. It's what, yes. in and out of two, three-year highs. Do you see that continue? Could that address this? Well, the, the, the dollar is going up because people are, are fearful, not right. because they have faith that the Fed knows what it's doing with the so dollar. all the wrong reasons. All the wrong reasons. And again... So this run-up would be short-lived, according to you. Yes. Uh, remember, the last year, everyone's pointed it out, even though we're recovering from the COVID crisis, the Fed continued to print money on a prodigious scale, $120 billion of bond buying a month. And what it's done short term is what they tried to do. In effect, they're pouring a bucket of water in one end of the pool and they took a bucket of water out of the other end of the pool was they borrowed that money back overnight. You look at their balance sheet. In February of 2000, there's no overnight short money borrowing by the Fed. They call them reverse repurchase agreements. Right. Today, $1.8 trillion, going on $2 trillion of money they print. Now they're trying to make sure it doesn't flood the economy. That's just gross mismanagement. But, you know, it, it, by that definition, and if you think about it, Steve, it could be global the mismanagement, right? I mean, yes. Britain raised rates for the fourth time, I think, since December, 13-year highs. I was mentioning, you know, in Turkey, we were running at, you know, a 70 percent inflation rate, Argentina close to 60 percent. And on and on we go, you know, skipping across all of Europe. The average mean now a little bit north of 10 percent here, 8 percent plus in our country. Um, how bad does this get? Well, you see, they did the same thing in the 1970s, some less bad than the others. Swiss did very well. Germans did relatively well. We were bad. Others were bad. So the whole world we looked We started throwing on wage controls. Well, price and controls. Right. And, that? That? And, yeah. and, and this administration may still do it with energy before the election coming up and pharmaceuticals and stuff like that, which just make the situation worse. And again, part of this is supply chain disruption. Part of that you can't control. But in this country, instead of figuring out how do we remove these artificial barriers to production, we need more production now, uh, they're piling it on. Uh, Biden says we are for infrastructure. Yet a few weeks ago, they put on new rules or reimpose rules that are going to delay infrastructure projects, which you have to go through to get something approved. We all know what they're doing on the energy front. So they're making the situation worse, not better. Leave the economy alone. Fed should focus on the stable value of the dollars they've done in the past. And this thing will work itself out. And I think the markets would respond if they felt these people know what they're doing. Part of the problem now is, do these people really know what they're doing? Do the doctors really know how to treat the patients? You know, um, a lot of people here that let this work out is the Herbert Hoover solution. Um, what do you say to that? Because Democrats well, the, say, no, we got to do something. But, you know, what, what, what do you make of that? 
Well, Herbert Hoover, as a lot of historians have discovered, did the exact opposite. He was a very activist president. He boosted spending substantially, amazingly substantially increased taxes, destroyed the global trading system with a massive trade war. So he went in the opposite direction. If he'd left the economy alone, people forget today, they don't mention the history books, going back in time, back in 1920-21, we had a depression worse than the first year, year and a half of the, what we call the Great Depression. What did the government do? Cut taxes, cut spending, cut regulations. Within a year, the economy was recovering. With 18 months, we had full employment again. So let the economy well, then what heal. Happens, I hear you say that, but what happens then? We're obviously in midterm election year. Yeah. Uh, I got a sense the Republicans are just going to watch this play out. They're, they're, they're in the minority. They can't do anything that they wanted to. The Democrats are going to rally around some sort of infrastructure thing, maybe college loan forgiveness, more spending, which at least got this spark to begin with. Other things, you know, exasperated. I get that. But, but I, I'm just wondering, uh, if you do nothing, what happens? Uh, doing nothing would be better than doing bad things. If you want to do positive things, which this administration won't do, and which Reagan uh, did in the early 1980s when they're trying to kill that terrible inflation, was you reduce taxes, you reduce regulations, you had a little bit of spending restraint. So the natural economy... But that economy, was coupled with Paul Volcker raising rates, what, a point at a time? Do we yeah, need a combination like that? No, uh, because when Volcker did that, you had 12 years of where they sort of fight the inflation, bring it down, then let it come back stronger than before. That's why what the Fed should do now is focus on the dollar so we don't get where we were in the early 1980s, where you have to raise it to 20 percent. You don't have to do that. You don't have to de artificially depress the economy. And again, it's not something new for the Fed. I keep saying, do what you did during the Great Moderation. And, uh, and 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 uh, with Biden, back off on your far left, and you'll be seen as a great president who the economy revived instead of putting all these uh, barriers in the way. It's it's absolutely malpractice. You know what I think is also a different. And you're a great student of history and economic history, especially the attention we pay to the markets. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing because um, they could change. Today's a good example of that. <laughs> yeah. 180 degrees from where we were yesterday, but. Um, I don't remember Paul Volcker or, for that matter, Ronald Reagan, you know, focusing so much on the initial market reaction. Um, maybe when the, the recovery started taking hold, we were at our nadir point, that, you know, in 82, and it was the liftoff from there. But maybe it's owing to 24-hour news and business channels, and it's always topical. It's always on our mind. I feel that so many are basing what they do and even Fed policy on what the market is doing at the moment. Well, and, and in terms of the market, we always know the market tries to anticipate the future. Problem is, when the people who are setting the environment in which the economy has to operate, which ultimately affects the market, uh, going in w w different directions, clearly not knowing what they're doing, the market's going to be uh, going all over the place. In the early 80s, there was so little trust in the Federal Reserve by then. We think of Paul Volcker's, there's a great hero today, right. but there's zero trust. Everyone thought these Remember people Arthur don't Miller know. And all that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yes, down, down right, uh, right. nightmare not lane. Not everyone is Lincoln in the moment, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But, 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 but in that case, there was zero zero trust. People didn't know if Reagan was going to be able to pull it off. So uh, the markets reflected that. Dow Jones got down to 800 and something in August of uh, 1982. Then Volcker reversed the tight money. The thing had been cured. And by golly, the market roared ahead. And then the economy. I remember in 83, oh, we'll only have one or two percent growth because, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Roared eight percent. So leave it alone. Let it heal. The American people will save these people from themselves if they let them. You know, it's night and day, and I know I just wanted to pick your brain on this. Uh, this, you know, back then, the early 80s, about, I think it was a little over 83 percent of the public was paying some form of federal taxes. Uh, yes. Today, it's under 50 percent. Now, I don't negate or dismiss those who pay you know, Social Security, FICA-related taxes. I, I get that. But that fewer are paying in uh, for a government that's getting bigger and bigger. And I'm just wondering how that plays into this going forward, if, if it's a shrinking pool of taxpayers. Well, you hit on the thing that uh, saves us from that is the FICA. 
even though we know right, it's supposed right, to right. be for Social Security and Medicare and all that good stuff, uh, people know they're paying tax on day one. And a lot of states have been raising taxes. Sales taxes have been inching up. All sorts of fees have been inching up. So uh, they may not pay formerly federal income tax, but they feel that they're paying a lot of other taxes. So the Rick Scott approach is leading the senatorial committee for Republicans to that, 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 get everybody to pay something and increase that base, you think is counterproductive? <laughs> when you tell people, I don't think you're paying enough tax. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's the stuff of which a revolution yeah. is made. I didn't succeed in politics, but no, you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you did. Actually, we started a couple of revolutions, young man.